92. Try becoming the problem. Whatever type of problem you are facing, the most self-motivational exercise I know of is to immediately say to yourself, I am the problem. Because once you see yourself as the problem, you can see yourself as the solution. This insight was dramatically described by James Belasco in Flight of the Buffalo. This is the insight I realized early and returned too often. He wrote, in most situations, I am the problem. My mentalities, my pictures, my expectations form the biggest obstacle to my success. By seeing ourselves as victims of our problems, we lose the power to solve them. We shut down creativity when we declare the source of the trouble to be outside of us. However, once we say, I am the problem, there is great power that shifts from the outside to the inside. Now we can become the solution. You can use this process the same way a detective uses a premise to clarify the crime scene. If the detective says, what if there were two murderers, not one? She can then think in a way that reveals new possibilities. She doesn't have to prove that there were two murderers in order to think the problem through as if there were. The same is true when you become willing always to see yourself as the problem. It is simply a way to think. Unfortunately, our society today is in the habit of thinking the opposite of I am the problem. Time magazine even ran a cover story called A Nation of Finger Pointers that made a powerful and persuasive case for the fact that we have become a nation of victims who see the American dream not as striving fulfilled, but as unachieved entitlement. In The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, Nathaniel Brandon writes, To feel competent to live and worthy of happiness. I need to experience a sense of control over my existence. This requires that I be willing to take responsibility for my actions and the attainment of my goals. This means that I take responsibility for my life and my well-being. Before I had realized the full power of a self-motivated life, I spent a lot of years pointing fingers. If I didn't have enough money, it was somebody else's fault. Even my perceived personality flaws were somebody else's fault. I was never taught that. I would shout in exasperation. No one showed me early in life how to be self-sufficient. Was a complaint I voiced often. But I was avoiding a basic truth. I was the problem. The reason I fought so hard to avoid that truth was that I never realized it contained good news. I thought it looked entirely shameful and negative. But once I discovered that accepting responsibility for the problem also gave me new power for solving it, I became free.